percent um, success success rate. rate um, over a regular type business at about forty two percent. And part of the reason is co ops really support each other. And we have organizations like FCI that support us. There is just such a safety net there for new co-op businesses that are opening. When I got my job with the co-op, I knew a little bit about co-ops. I knew more about nonprofit and business development. Um, But when I reached out to other food co-ops, they shared everything with me. You know, they shared graphics with me. They shared their um, PowerPoint presentations with me. And they weren't stingy about it and said, just use absolutely anything that you want. And that doesn't happen in regular business. We all kind of protect our stuff Mm -hmm. because we're competing with each other. And food co-ops are not in competition with each other. All they want to see is other food co-ops succeeding. Um, In fact, out west, there are some food co-ops that have opened in towns where um, corporate grocery stores have abandoned the entire towns. So um, people in the community have banded together and opened food co-ops. Some of them were really struggling. And other food co-ops have even donated money to their sister co-ops to help them keep going. So there really is a safety net there. Um, Your investment really is kind of protected in that safety net a little bit. And like any other investment, there is, of course, some risk. Mm -hmm. Um, But it's a $200 investment. That it's affordable be, for yeah. so many people. That would be my comment. I mean, first off, let's mention you have a payment plan. We so do have a payment plan. There's a way to get that done if you don't have the $200 to drop tomorrow. And I've been there. I understand. Um, but the thing I would talk about is I love that you brought up the viability. That's the thing. So people go, oh, food co-ops. Like, what is that? Actually, it's a tested business model that has been wildly successful for four decades. Um, and actually, the new startup food co-ops, on average, are performing as well or better than our long-term food co-ops. Um, so it's a well-tested business model, and we are business people, and we're going to develop a business. Um, so if you're like me and you're very business-minded and like, well, where's, where's the business plan before <laughs> I sign up for things? Um, we're following a tried-and-true model that has opened actually 140 food co-ops just in the last decade, this model that Bay City's using while working through Food Co-op Initiative, and it is a viable business plan, and we can talk more about that. Um, so one thing you said that I want to touch on, though, is I want to touch on this $200 is an investment in a potential future for the direction we want our city to go. So it is us all putting our money in the kitty and taking a little bit of risk and saying, we're putting these dollars in to be used to create a business plan and viability to move forward. So I just want to be careful that we all say, like, absolutely, you know, it's in there and, and the co-op will use it responsibly. But we as a community have to invest and use that money to develop this business. But $200 to explore the possibility of something that will grow more farms, more local businesses, more local jobs, more local interconnection and a better and stronger base city, you know, I say sign me up. I say so. And I mean, that's, it is your actual brick. It is your actual brick in the bricks and mortar of our store. Um, So if you want to learn more about Bay City Cooperative Market, please call me, Robin Devereaux Nelson. I'm the outreach coordinator for Bay City Cooperative Market at 989-928-3561. You can email me at outreach at baycityfood.org. And if you'd like to sign up online and become an owner, it's super easy. Um, You can fill out your application and mail in your payment via PayPal um, at baycityfood.org. Just click on the button that says Join Us. I'm also available to do presentations for your organization, your church, um, to come in and talk about the food co-op. And we are booking house parties right now. Super fun. Super fun. So you and some of your friends get together. I come and talk with you about the co-op and do all the hard um, and heavy lifting. And we have a little bit of wine and cheese and have some, have some fun. Maybe play a couple co-op games. <laughs> so give me a call and we'll book your house party. So, do you mind if I ask some questions? Sure, Deb. Go ahead. Okay. So, how many food co-ops are there now in the United States? You know, um, we don't actually have every single one because we're so independent counted up, but there is estimated to be about 300 food co-ops around the nation. That, so, that's a lot. So, I don't know if everybody knows how the whole history of food co-ops. And so, I thank you very much for sharing that with, with us because... We, we as a society are kind of afraid of putting money out there unless 
we have a lot of it and we're used to doing that. Mm -hmm. You know, and the, and people that aren't investors, I don't think really understand the whole premise of of the food co-op. Well, is, here's the cool is, thing too, Deb. I mean, think about big business. How many big businesses are going to let you buy into their business for $200? Right. And it's not very much money. To, but to some people, $200 Absolutely. is a lot of money. Exactly. And that's why we have the payment plan. Right. And so that, and I really appreciate that, too. I thought that was a really good move to do that payment plan. So you explaining stuff to us makes us understand more. Dylan didn't bark the whole time that other show was on. <laughs> um, so, so here we are. We're, you know, we're moving ahead mm -hmm. and you can't it, there's a saying that when i see it i'll believe it yes but in the law of attraction and so many other um faiths or whatever it's when i believe it i'll see it exactly yes. and if you turn that around to really focus on this thing that's going to bring our community together in a way that we have not experienced mm -hmm. that we need we need that sense of community and look how many more people live downtown now yes i mean it's so different than it was even when i moved here eight years ago it's yeah. different now. it's really growing downtown yes and people are downtown more and people come from out of town to the tall ships Exactly. To shop at City Market. To, so we're getting all these different people coming in that were never here before. They're going to help support this as well. You don't have to be a member to shop there. Is, no. Absolutely correct. And it's open. Co -op, food co-op's open to everyone. The idea is that you become an owner because you believe in it. You get a few extra benefits once you're open, some sales days that are just for you. But anyone can shop there. It's a public grocery store, and it will add a real it adds a real shine to your region, to your downtown, and people who come to spend time in the community. They come from towns that have had food co-ops. They will find that food co-op yes. and fall in love with all the local food on the shelves. I love that, yes. And it's more about just gr and then grocery shopping as well. I mean, we're offering some classes right now, some free ones and some fee-based classes. So the free ones, uh, like we've had a recycling class, we've had a co-op. Um, what, what is a co-op food class? Um, so the classes are, are happening, so we'd have that going on at the store location. Um, I was talking about my dream being a green wall that school kids can plant in May. Oh, And we'd nice. have the green I wall that. that would exist yes. all summer long. Um, so it's about that, having a little deli. So really being a destination downtown, not just a grocery store, but a destination for tourists as well where there's, there's fun, exciting stuff happening all the time. Well, Very good. I love that. So we're going to support our community by buying um, local goods. But uh, something that I learned was because it's a food co-op, you have a, uh, a pool because all food co-ops go together and buy in bulk. Yep. So healthy canned foods and... Um, That's what we're looking for is tr and lot transparency and not just in... Transparency in the business, because we have transparency with our owners. So we are, the owners decide who's on the board. Owners decide how we're going to spend our money and, and kind of what our store philosophy is going to be. We are all um, invested um, in our hearts and not just the $200 in what we want to see happen with our food co-op. But also transparency in where's my food coming from and what's in it. So transparency and labeling, and really important. That is so important. It's so important. So, and if you, if you are older and you're thinking, well, I'm never going to get my benefits from this 200. What about your kids? <laughs> what about your kids? You kids? tell them, Deb. Deb's going out on the road with me. <laughs> <laughs> you know, and so many people feel like that. Well, I'm not. And, and I don't eat that way. And that you do eat that way. Every time you go to the grocery store and you buy fresh produce. You do eat that way. So why not support somebody here locally rather than somebody from Chile? 
Exactly. You know, it, and you know, there's some myths about the food co-op too. It's like are. it's not just a place for vegans to shop. No. It's right. not just a place for ex-hippies. For, for, for the ex-hippies. Like you and I are probably or, be there for, all the time. Um, very wealthy people to shop. Right. The food co-op is inclusive. It's for everybody. Um, the exciting thing about some of the the very healthy or non-GMO food choices or it is people who are on restrictive type diets sometimes have a tough time shopping in a regular grocery right. store and finding things that that they can eat so we want to serve that population as well so so people who have some restrictions in their diet very good i'm i'm really happy to hear that you're there's going to be a deli yeah i'm excited I need about a deli. that too yeah. That is what you, you guys have done. I mean, this is a professional business, and your board's doing it right. So they've actually already had a professional market study done with a firm that does these market studies for independent and small food co-ops across the nation and has said that this looks this community can support a store that should have a small deli. Absolutely. So she, they've already Sweet. recommended that. So, so score. Yeah. Not, not every food co-op uh, community gets recommended that they could support one. Yours said, yes, you can. Um, so, you know, nothing's in stone yet. And this is part of why to become an owner now. The vision's still developing. And as locations are picked, you know, what happens after the location is picked, there's all of this input process from the owners about what they want in their store, what they want it to look like, what kind of events. You know, if we want the green wall. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, and if you are an owner, you get to be part of deciding before it even gets created. So now's the time. Like, get involved in deciding what this thing is going to be. There's so many different directions it can take. I love it. It's so important. It's so important to our community and... And um, our future. Our, I agree. It's really a wonderful, wonderful thing. So why be a faceless customer? Yes. When you can be a part of your grocery store? Oh, I run into people there. You know, I, I think that, that in itself, I remember going to, the, going to the grocery store when I was little with my mom, and she'd see three or four people right, that and she knew and, there. Yes. Yeah. And I'd be standing there. Ah, and then. <laughs> right. But now when I look back, how, how I loved that sense of community. And right. we've lost that. We have. Half of us don't even know our neighbors. Yep. So let's get it back. You yeah. know, And that's what Bay City, I see it growing that direction. So the co-op is going to help that. Yes. It's going to help bring back that, that sense of um, community. We do so many other things. Why not do this? It's, it's your future, people. It's a win-win. It is. It's <laughs> absolutely a win-win. So I'm going to have you give your contact information again. And please reach out. And there are so many people that are involved in the food co-op already that can answer your questions. We've had them on the show several times before. Go back and listen to what they're saying. When they were brand new and barely had 50 members, they were here talking about it. Now you've, you've doubled that. So it's growing. And don't be one of those people that when I see it, I'll believe it. Twi- turn it around because it's coming. And invest in it now and you'll see it faster. So you can contact me. My name is Robin Devereaux Nelson. I'm the outreach coordinator with Bay City Cooperative Market, 989-928-3561 or at outreach at baycityfood.org. Thanks. Thanks for listening to the special presentation of the Bay City Food Cooperative Market. Coming soon in a building near you.